Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship this day. It is great to see each and every one of you on this day that God has given us to come and to be together. So let us come. Let the Holy Spirit bind us together as we gather, as we worship. morning. Please rise and join me in the call to worship. Out of the blue, God, God comes, comes to us. us. In the storms of life, Jesus, Jesus walks, walks toward us. us. As darkness closes in, the, the light, light of faith pierces the dark. dark. Love calms our fear. Hope, Hope lifts, lifts our, our despair. despair. Out of the blue, Jesus, Jesus comes, comes through to call our names to follow, follow and serve. serve. As we raise our voices in, in prayer, prayer and praise, praise in worship and song, let us now join together in hymn 140, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Thank you. 
remain standing as we join in the opening prayer. God of grace and power, we, your people, have gathered here to be close to you, to hear again the words of faith and hope, to sing again words of praise, and to be challenged to serve. We come to be your people of more faith than fear, inspired to reach out and live out and carry out your mission of hope to a hurting world. Challenge our faith, O oh God. Rekindle within us the passion of your word. Help us see again your vision for us and your church as we worship you this day. Amen. Let us now greet one another as a sign of God's peace here to stay. <laughs> peace be with you.
Thank you, Haley. I'm going to invite our kids up for our, our kids' time. Great job, kids. Come on up, kids. Jordan, can you come up far? All righty. Good morning, guys. All right. You guys ever, how are you? Good. You guys ever get scared? You ever get scared? What are you scared of? Devin, what are you afraid of? Okay, he's got to think. <laughs> Freaked out by spiders. You're afraid of, Devin. <laughs> <laughs> Some people get a little scared. What do you do when people get scared? You just talk to them. What do you do to help you not be scared? You ever see the nightlight? You're afraid of the dark? Yeah. Sometimes you use this. Anybody got a stuffed animal at home? Yeah. yeah. Stuffed animal, Devin? Yeah, do you ever hug it? Okay. Every once in a while. Oh, what about storms? You scared of storms? No. All right. I'm going to keep thinking. I'm going to keep thinking. Well, so what happens when we hug our little stuffed animal or we see our light? What does it do for us? It calms you down. Calms you down. Yeah. What's the other thing we do when we're scared? What's the other thing we can do? Can we fold our hands and we can pray? And why does that help us? Because is, is God there with us in those scary times? Yeah. In any of those scary times, we are really Right? We might have our stuffed animal, and we might have our nightlight. But you know what? Jesus is right there with us. So I want you guys to remember that, that in any time you're afraid, Jesus is right there with you. All right? Well, let's say a prayer about that. Oh, God, we know that there are times we get scared. But help us to know that in those times, you are right there with us. And you are right beside us each and every day, each and every night. Be with these young disciples and watch over them. All right. Thank you, guys. The Old Testament reading this morning is from Psalm 27, verses 1 through 8 and 14. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. At his sacred tent, I will sacrifice with shouts of joy I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice when I call, Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says of you, seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Amen. Our gospel lesson this morning is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 14, 22 through 27. I invite you to stand for our reading and hearing of our gospel lesson. Hear now these words from the Gospel of Matthew. 
Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat battered by the waves was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. May God add his blessing to our reading and hearing and living out of the word this day. You may be seated. The Pillsbury Doughboy, cute, cuddly, wanted for attempted murder. Not exactly. A woman in Kansas was sitting in her car on a really, really, really hot day. She heard a loud bang, felt a sharp pain in the back of her head. She was holding her hands beside her when someone walked up and they said, are you okay? And she said, I've been shot in the head and I think my brains are falling out. Well, it wasn't her brains, it was the dough. A Pillsbury biscuit canister had exploded in the back seat and had shot into the back of her head, making a loud explosion. Sometimes our fears are a lot like that lady's. They may be unfounded, they may be irrational, but more often our fears are based on rational and well-founded reasons. Life can be risky, we know this. It is therefore filled with opportunities or reasons to fear or have anxiety. Fear starts out when we're young with uh, fear like darkness or monsters under the bed and it continues in our teenage years with rejection or humiliation and failure and adulthood is filled with possible fears like fear of disease or death or financial problems or broken relationships or loved ones being hurt or failure. And sometimes our fears can be a good thing. Our fears can keep us alert, they can keep us vigilant, but there are those times when our fears do paralyze us. Our fears should never confine us, nor should they ever divert us from the abundant life that God wants us to have and to claim. And so we all want peace in our lives in some way or another, and no one knew this better than David, the author of Psalm 27 that Marcia read. David's life had not been an easy one. He was plucked out of obscurity as a young boy and anointed king. But the problem was there was already a king, and his name was Saul. And Saul was not very stable mentally, to say the least. In fact, his sometimes violent behavior bordered on insanity. For a time, David worked for Saul, keeping him calm through his music, through playing the harp, and through singing to Saul. But eventually Saul's jealousies and paranoia of David got the better of him, and he lashed out at David, threatening and trying to kill him. So Saul raised an army, and David raised an army, and then Saul set out to hunt and kill David. David knew fear. He knew what it was like to be stalked by anxiety and pursued by worry. But he also knew the path that leads out, the path that leads to a peace that passes all understanding. And this psalm is all about that path we are called this day to follow. For it is in those times that we are given a choice to focus on our fear or to focus on God. First, David says to us in this psalm, the Lord is my light. Very often troubling or fearful times are compared to darkness when we feel lost or in need of direction in those times. If you've ever walked into a room in total darkness, there might be hesitation or caution or apprehension. We're afraid of making that wrong turn, of hitting something, stubbing our toe, breaking our, our foot or something, or tripping or falling. The same is not true when the lights are on. In the same way, there are troubling and dark times in which our fear is increased because we don't know which way to go or what to do. We feel in the dark. David's fear disappears because he recognized that the Lord is the light in those dark and fearful times, one that he can rely on for guidance. Once there was a small boy riding in a car with his parents on a way to visit his grandparents who lived several miles away, and as they were driving, a thick fog settled over the hilly countryside. 
before they started home, and the boy was terrified as it got very, very dark, and, and, and asked if they could go even slower, and his mother said to him gently, don't worry, your father knows the way. You see, his father had walked the road when there were no gasoline during the war. He had ridden the blacktop thousands of times on his bicycle, and for years he had made these weekly trips to his parents' house, and so how often when we can't see the road of life and have felt that familiar panic rising in our hearts, do we echo, hear the echo of that mother's voice? Don't worry. Your God knows the way. Focus on God who knows the way, not on our fears that seek to divert us. David also notes in the psalm as he goes on to say that the Lord is his salvation, which means Literally, that the Lord is his rescuer, the Lord is his deliverer. In other words, David is not looking to other people or even to himself to fully rescue him or completely deliver him. Rather, he's looking to God. In our gospel lesson from Matthew, this morning the disciples are alone on the Sea of Galilee when a sudden storm comes up. And in the midst of this, they see what looks like Jesus walking towards them on the water. And the disciples are afraid. And then Peter exclaims, Lord, if it is you, bid me to come out on the water. And Jesus calls to him, come. And Peter gets out on the boat, and he is standing on the water, and he is walking towards Jesus, and then he takes his eyes off Jesus and looks down at the waves, and he begins to sink. As Jesus stretched out his hand to lift him up, and he said, why did you doubt? Jesus calls Peter and us to keep our focus on him as we step out of our boats, our boats of fear or, or anxiety or loneliness or of grief or hurt, we are called to step out and follow. And so focus on God who gives us confidence, not on our fears that can leave us feeling defenseless. And then David goes on. He says, you know, the Lord is my light and the Lord is my salvation. And then he says, the Lord is the stronghold of our life. And a stronghold is a refuge. It's a place of safety from danger. David is saying we should have confidence and peace, not because there are no serious storms in our life, but because we have a secure place, a sure stronghold, for the Lord is our refuge. Now, the refuge that's being talked about, this word that's here, is not a place. It's not a fortress, anything that is is physical. It is the fortress of our relationship with God, a relationship of hope and of grace that holds us up and gives us that feeling of security because when we look to the greatness of our God, instead of to the greatness of our problems, our anxiety will fade. As long as Peter focused on Jesus outside that boat, he was kept above the water. And so we need to focus on and hear that voice of Jesus this day as he says to us, I am with you. Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. So let us focus on God, the source of our strength, not on our fears that leave us helpless. As David focused on God, his fears diminished. They didn't go away completely, but his confidence grew. His courage grew so that he was assured that in any of these anxious situations, he was not alone. And so the bottom line is this, will we let our fears hold us back? Hold us back from the abundant life that God calls us to live and to lead? Because God does not call us to a life of fear. Just like Peter, will we get out of that boat, keep our focus where it needs to be, as we continue to walk forward and hear that call and be engaged in ministry to this world? For example, take Nikki Taylor, who was diagnosed in seventh grade with leukemia, and Nikki went through chemotherapy and lost all of her hair. To be different as a seventh grader is a kind of death. Without hair, Nikki was very different from her peers. She was generally a popular girl, but she faced her hurdles. Kids would sneak up behind her and they'd snatch off her wig. People would stare at her and they would laugh. No one would sit next to her in the cafeteria or in class. The lockers on either side of her had suddenly become empty. And Nikki told her parents through her tears that she could handle losing her hair, but the hardest part of her illness was losing her friends. Her parents gave a choice of staying in school or withdrawing and being homeschooled. And so Nikki was afraid. 
It's hard to be different. It's hard to be bullied. It's hard to be picked on. And it's hard to have an illness like leukemia. So Nikki prayed, and she listened. And in the midst of that prayer, in the midst of that listening, she felt a peace and a confidence and a courage and a calling to go back to school because she knew she wasn't al alone. A larger love and a larger presence was there for her and with her and surrounding her. So Nikki set out for school the next Monday. Her parents drove her, and when she got to school, she hugged and she kissed both her parents, and she says, Mom and Dad, guess what I am going to do today? And her eyes began to tear up. She said, today, I'm going to find out who my best friend is. Today, I'm going to find out who my real friends are. And then Nikki took off her wig, and she set it down on the car seat, and she said, they take me for who I am, or they don't take me at all. I don't have much time left, and I've got to find out who they are today. Then Nikki and her parents prayed, and she walked into school, and not a single person bullied her or taunted her from that day forward. Nikki went on to fully answer her call and face her fears when she helped set up support groups for other kids like her who were going through the same thing that she was going through. Nikki passed away eight years later. And her life is a testament to what is possible when we have more faith than fear, when we listen and respond, when we take that chance to get out of that boat and follow. Take heart. It is I. Do not be afraid. Let us focus on those words of Christ as we go forward today, realizing we are not to ignore our fears or our struggles. They are with us. They are part of our human condition. We are meant to deal with them honestly and directly, but to do that by having trust and having faith in God. And so I close with this image. When an eagle knows that a storm is coming, it'll fly to some high spot and wait for the winds to come. When the storm hits, it sets its wings so that the wind will pick it up and lift it above the storm. While the storm rages below, the eagle is soaring above it. The eagle does not escape the storm and simply uses the storm to lift it higher. It rises on the winds that bring the storm. Don't let adversity or fear impact your spiritual life. Allow your spiritual life to impact your fears and your adversity and your hurts and your pains and your griefs. The hurts and the pains and the fears and the anxieties of life will always be with us, but what a joy this day to hear this word that we are not alone. For our God of light and salvation, our refuge gives us the strength and the hope to soar above, to get out of any boat, be set free from any fear, to walk by faith. Set free from the fear of taking risks, for we see the opportunity. Set free from the fear of standing up against injustice, for we are filled with a spirit of courage. Set free from the fear of another, because we see the hand of God at work in everyone and everything around us. So take heart. Never quit. Stay with God. For it is in Christ alone that our hope is found. He is our light. He is our strength. He is our song. Amen. Let's stand and let's join in our worship and song hymnal, hymn number 3105, In Christ Alone.
Amen. You may be seated. We come now to our time of prayers. What joys do you have this day? What concerns do you bring? Yeah. <laughs> well, thank God, Stan, that <laughs> you are okay. Thank you for sharing that. Other uh, prayers this day, other joys or other concerns that you might have this morning to share? Yeah, right there. Mary. And we're going to try to use our microphone so we hear. Um, prayers for my friend Betty, who um, has her third recurrence of breast cancer in three years, and this time it's in her spine and her liver. So. She definitely needs prayers. All right. Prayers for Marilyn's friend Betty with the recurrence of her cancer. Yeah, we down here, do we? <laughs> oh. Little boy has a tumor in his brain, and he's having brain surgery tomorrow, so I ask for prayers for him, his family, and the neurosurgeon who's going to be doing the surgery. All right. For little Luca at age seven having surgery. Yeah. I just wanted to thank everyone that uh, has been praying for my brother's family. I'm not sure, you may not know, but we've had a, um, a pretty long couple of months here with them. Uh, my brother has two children. Both were pregnant. Uh, it was a boy and a girl. Both were pregnant with twins. Uh, both have lost one, and one was delivered 25 weeks, uh, at 25 weeks, just short of that. So the struggles continue for um, Elizabeth, who is the, uh, you know, the the child that was born, and the, uh, my nephew's wife has been in and out of the hospital trying to stop labor, so we're, we're still struggling with that. But we appreciate everyone's prayers. You know, they're getting through it, and um, we've, uh, we've relied on a lot of help and a lot of prayers from everyone, so we appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Pat. Other prayers this morning? Other joys? Other concerns? Yeah. Well, Katie. Go by Katie, because she's right there. <laughs> like prayers for Raya, uh, who is, uh, I'm sure, pretty feel fearful right now, trying to figure out who is going to be the most important guidant, guardian in her life, because she doesn't have a guardian right now since Gloria has passed on. So lots and lots of prayers for her. All right. Prayers for Araya this day. And Ginger, up near the front. <laughs> I have two. Um, the first is just thanks for, <coughs> excuse me, the prayers upon Kim's death. Um, it's, it just seems to be so much more hard to handle grief when someone dies suddenly and very young. She was 39. So we thank everybody for their prayers. And, <coughs> excuse me, and the second one I have is that Herbie has some quick and easy hand surgery tomorrow. So um, quick and easy prayers for her for tomorrow morning. <laughs> thank you. All right, some quick and easy prayers for <laughs> Herb's hand surgery, and for Kim's family in the midst of their grief. Yeah. Other uh, joys or concerns, or prayers you have this morning to share? All right. Well, in your, in your bulletin, as always, is our, our prayer chain um, that has all sorts of people, all sorts of situations that are on it um, that we are praying for. Some that have been mentioned this morning, some that have not. Um, but I do invite you this week to keep these people and these situations in your thoughts and in your prayers, because that does connect us to them and to God. You all received a card in the beginning of the service, and of course I invite you to fill it out so we know you're here, but there's also a spot for your prayer request, and I encourage you to fill that out if you'd like to be on the prayer chain so we can pray with you and pray for you and, and walk with you um, in, this, in this time. All right, well with these prayers, any other prayers, joy or concern? With these prayers that you have mentioned and those in our hearts, let's pause. Let's pray. 
Almighty, gracious God, we know, God, that you are with us in all those times and moments of life, in those times of joy and of happiness and in those times when it is a bit foggy and a bit unclear and a bit scary. Oh, Lord, let us, let us ease our fears. Let us give our fears and our anxieties, our hurts and our struggles to you this morning. Let us surrender them to you and into your hands as we behold your light that guides us and surround us, as we know that in our relationship with you, you are our, our stronghold, and as we keep our eyes firmly on you, just as the disciples were to do as they got out of that boat. So God, this day, let us keep our focus and our hearts and our lives on you as we surrender our hearts to you this morning. As we, O oh God, are mindful of those that are around us, that are hurting and struggling and in those anxious and fearful times. So, God, this morning we lift up to you those who are sick and those who are injured, and we pray for healing for them. We pray, O oh God, for those who have heard your call to be healers amongst us. And so we pray for their work and their ministry. We pray, O oh God, for those who are grieving a loss, whether that loss was recent or it was long ago, but for those who have that hole in their heart and that pain from grief. We pray for your comfort and your peace to surround them in this time. We pray for our world, O oh God, as we look out around it and we see violence and we see war and we see struggle. We pray for those who hear that call to peace, as we pray, O oh God, for peace in our world and in our neighborhoods and in our hearts. We pray, O oh God, for those who may be lost this day, and we pray for your light to surround them and for guidance to be felt in their hearts and their lives. O oh Lord, as we gather with these prayers, we are also so very thankful as a people, thankful for the joys of our lives, joys of, of accidents that we're not as bad as it could have been that we have walked away from, of your protection that we have felt strongly in our lives, for the joys of family and friends that surround us and comfort us, for the joys of our faith, of our church family that prays for us, and for the joys of our faith in your Son, Jesus Christ, who knows our hurts and our struggles and our fears, and yet walks with us through all the times of life. Oh Lord, we come with these prayers this morning as a community, and we lift them up to you. But there are others within our hearts, and so we pause for a moment to lift to you our, our prayers in our hearts and let your Holy Spirit move through us in this time of silent prayer. O oh God, as you've heard our prayers, both silent and spoken, hear us as we join in prayer, as we pray together. Our Father, give us this day. Announcements this week, remember that Tai Chi is going on Monday and Friday at 11 a.m. Um, also coming up on Saturday, August 23rd, will be our outdoor worship, which will be at 6. It'll be at the fire ring right out here. And then the next day on Sunday, August 24th, will be our youth mission trip. And so that 
will not be this next Sunday, but two Sundays. So that will be all of our youth will be here, and I invite you to come. Um, you'll get to see their pictures and hear stories and hear their testimonies. And it was a great trip that they had to Parsons, Kansas. Um, a couple other announcements that aren't on my little thing. Um, I will be gone this week. I leave on Tuesday. I'll be in Denver for a meeting that I'm attending. And so next Sunday, I'll thank in advance Herb, who will be preaching for me. And um, you're in for a treat. He's going to share his trip to Alaska. So <laughs> that'll be great. So thank you, Herb, for that. Um, also, this is our second um, Sunday. Um, and so this is our Fair Trade Coffee Sunday. And so we have Fair Trade Coffee that we use during our fellowship time, and it's also on sale in Peg's office. Um, and so I invite you, if you want to give a collection to allow us to keep doing the Fair Trade Coffee. That'll be during our fellowship time after the service. Um, also, the month of August, our outreach team has launched our Imagine No Malaria campaign. So you have your little insert in here that talks a little bit about it. We also have our baby crib out there with the mosquitoes trying to get to the baby. And so the way it works is you can take a mosquito off and put it in the box, and you can put a donation in there. 100% of that goes to the Imagine No Malaria campaign that we are doing for the larger church. Um, or you can take an envelope from the pew and do the same thing. Um, so throughout this month, we've been watching um, different stories and videos of people who, and their experience of malaria. And so today I want to share another one from you. So Dane, if you'll start that, I invite you to watch this. Ask anyone on the continent of Africa about malaria, and they will tell you about a painful, personal attack of the disease, or someone they know who has died. I've got three children. At the moment they get malaria, they get sick, they lie, they vomit. When my children have malaria, I'm very worried, because while you are still waiting to see the doctor, you will see someone dying. For more than 160 years, the United Methodist Church has operated hospitals and clinics throughout Africa, fighting diseases of poverty like malaria. In 2006, we became a founding partner with the United Nations Foundation in the Nothing But Nets campaign. We raised more than $25 million to distribute millions of bed nets to families in sub-Saharan Africa. Today, Imagine No Malaria is our opportunity to take the next step empower an entire continent to achieve a sustainable victory over malaria. We need to go beyond the bed nets distribution because the problem here in Africa is lack of education, lack of clean environment and a cultural perception. It is time to do more. The United Methodist Church is joining leaders in global health as we work to eliminate deaths from malaria in Africa by 2015. In just three years, United Methodists supported nothing but nets with $7.5 million. Imagine No Malaria is a commitment to increase our support tenfold by raising $75 million in that same time frame. These resources will enable a comprehensive approach that includes prevention, not just bed nets, but working on a local level to break the mosquito life cycle by draining standing water where insects breed, treatment, and access to medical help. Imagine No Malaria will fund existing hospitals and train community health workers in remote villages, equipping them with life-saving medicines to treat those infected with malaria. Education. Reaching people in rural areas with information on steps individuals can take to protect themselves from the bite of mosquitoes. School children are already spreading the word through educational skits. Malaria is my name. I visit you without your invitation. I affect all people in different age groups. When I enter into your body, you never be the same again. And finally, communication. On a continent that doesn't rely on printed materials or newspapers, we will get life-saving information to people through radio and cell phones. We can educate the people in Mozambique, telling them about how we can prevent malaria. We are committed to eliminating malaria, a major source of human suffering in Africa. Imagine no malaria.
Eliminating death by malaria is a realistic goal. With your help, we can save a million lives a year. If we're going to make United Methodism a movement again, and I think that movement is not only an outgrowth of what John Wesley did in England by taking uh, the ministry of the church into the coal mines and into the fields, it's an expression of what Jesus himself did with the disciples in taking them into the places where the hurting and the homeless and the disenfranchised were to provide them hope, healing, and grace that they had never experienced before. Here's how you can get involved today. Know about malaria and how the United Methodist Church is working to eliminate deaths caused by this preventable okay. disease. Go to www.imaginenomalaria.org to learn more or to make a donation. Share your knowledge of malaria with your church and your community. The Imagine No Malaria Ministry is moving conference to conference and will be in your area soon. You can act to support Imagine No Malaria by planning nothing but NETS activities to continue teaching your church and community about malaria. Finally, pray for the success of the INM ministry and for all of God's children suffering from this preventable, treatable, and beatable disease. God can accomplish more than we can ask or imagine. Together, we can imagine no malaria. And the Wisconsin Annual Conference is a full partner with the Imagine No Malaria campaign, which is a worldwide campaign of our church. So I invite you to respond and um, help out in whatever way you can. And what we give here is combined with what all of the millions of Methodists around the world um, combined to fight malaria. So any other announcements this morning? Alrighty, with that, let us come. And let us give God all that we are and have. As I invite our ushers for to collect this morning's offering. And Haley, share another beautiful song.
Let us pray. Oh God, thank you for all of the ways you bless our lives. As we this day give back to you, as we give to you our gifts, as we give to you our lives and our hearts, as we put our focus on you, oh God. Bless these gifts and bless us in our ministries as we continue to reach out to be your light and be your hope and your grace in the name of Christ. Amen. Let's join in our closing hymn, hymn number 512, Stand By Me. And so let us stand by Christ as, sta as Christ is standing by us. Let us go forward as people of faith, people not ruled by our fears because we keep our focus where it needs to be, on God's light and on salvation and on him who is our rescuer. Let us go forward in grace and let's go forward as a people of peace as we sing together, go in the peace of God.